Welcome back. We're here at the Auto Show and managed to meet Josiah from Sundberg Ferrar. And we're looking at actually at the Maverick. Now this is the Lariat version of the Maverick. We did a ride and drive of the Maverick a little while ago and I've had a chance to look at some of the different interiors and the other features of this for quite some time. But I haven't been able to review it with you. Um, so looking at this from your point of view, what are the things that's point, that stick out? What are the things that are noticeable? Yeah, the, uh, the big thing about this truck, the trucklet, is uh, the number of features and the, the, the style that, uh, that they really simplified things with on the interior and, and didn't detract uh, any of the usability. Um, I, I think the, uh, the simplicity of the door panels is a great place to start, frankly. Um, a lot of the other vehicles, uh, particularly in this lineup and at this price point, are still like putting more parts into the door panel, whereas this is astonishingly simple, but maintains like cool features like, like you know, this kind of cantilevered door handle, for instance. Uh, you kind of get additional benefits from that, like being a hook, basically, not, not just a closed handle, but a hook. Um, even this really nice texture on here instead of being a, a second part with like having padding and all that stuff you don't really need all that it's it's a utility vehicle so it's just hard plastic but it's a nice material and it's a cool kind of woven canvasy look um, I think as a commentary uh, against the uh, automotive uh, uh, the entire automotive market as a whole um, the Maverick kind of goes against that and uh, simplifies things. As you said earlier, it hits the reset button a little bit with uh, feature content and how that is executed exactly. So looking at how that it's executed, specifically to this door panel. So normally on a door panel, we have the main door carrier, injection molded component. It'll be between two and a half to three millimeters thick, depending on what they're doing. Then we have the top roll. The top roll is often padded, so it could be an injection molding that then has a thermoform skin, a foam in place, or some sort of a wrap. Then we have this insert medallion. All right, all of those things are coming together because the carrier would normally come up to support all of it. We have the top rail being applied. Then we have this medallion. I've had doors where I end up with a section that's nearly 10 millimeters thick of all of this overlapping plastic. Makes for a very, very heavy door. All of the attachment features end up increasing the costs for manufacturing, the number of stations that we need in manufacturing, um, and just the use of raw material is a cost that's detracted from the possible profit of the vehicle. With this vehicle, with their simplified design, they're able to actually save in all that material, all of that processing, to hit a reset button to come up with a lower cost vehicle overall. Now, this is still one panel continuing down. As you said, allowing this like canvas grain, it still gives a soft enough texture feel that you don't think of this as just being a hard molded plastic. Exactly. But it is. So there are a lot of efficiencies to the interior of this vehicle that we would not normally expect. Um, and a lot of integration, which we can get into a few more of those as well. Yeah, so. I think a great point to start also is the, uh, the center console. You see a lot of complication in center consoles, um, and this one just really simplifies things. You still have big cup holders, nice little charging spot, um, uh, reasonably high-end looking or technological looking uh, gear selector, uh, but it's all a single molded piece uh, with a few little trim part, uh, pieces. Yeah, that entire blue section of the center console is one piece. It's not a structure with a bunch of additional components snapped on top of it. Although, because people expect that, they still put in the look. We yep. see this character line, a couple of character lines actually, yep. that provide a breakup that make you think that it's multiple pieces, but it is not. Having a one-piece console without all of the integrated structure or the necessary structure underneath it that other vehicles would have, just to support itself. There is a huge weight savings, there's a material cost savings, and then there's the process savings across all of that. And on the usability side, this is infinitely more easy to clean because those are uh, just traces of part lines, not real part lines. Yep. It's all going to clean up a lot more easily. Um, the graining on this, there's no fake piano black anywhere. It's all pretty hefty grain, so, uh, you know, resist scratching and things like that. It's just extremely usable uh, on a vehicle that it should be extremely usable. It's a utility vehicle. 
I mean the IP, the instrument panel. When we look at this panel, we would normally think of some sort of a soft touch, or we would think of an upper panel that is attached to some sort of structured carrier. This is all integral. This is actually the carrier that these other components are being attached to. There's no separate layers. Um, again, weight savings, process savings, cost savings. Now, who is this a benefit for? Well, one, the OEM, it provides savings on their end, but it provides savings to the customer because we know what the selling price is for the Maverick. Having a utility vehicle, even in this somewhat reduced size over an actual truck, but for that price point is a huge benefit. And I know I was actually looking at one recently and unfortunately it was a six month wait time um, for purchase, which I was not willing to wait. Um, so there is a big desire in the market for an OEM that hits the reset button, that gives the customers what they need, rather than worrying about having all of those check marks checked on a marketing front. Yep, it's a little bit of a paradigm shift. And uh, obviously they hit the mark well enough that everyone recognizes, oh, this is really all I need. Um, and enough to create a six month waiting period. That's a success. Uh, so I dragged this over to the dark horse here uh, to point out a feature that is normally integrated into the headlamps. Uh, and it's usually kind of a freebie because you can mold it in. We'll show you some uh, analogous uh, features later. But on this car, the, the front profile is so dramatic uh, that instead of uh, meeting the requirement to be able to see the turn signal from 45 degrees uh, across car, they needed to add an additional lamp uh, at the very front corner uh, to be able to see the far side indicator. Now you were a designer. First time seeing that. And sometimes I pick on designers. I, I have no problem picking on designers because I like them <laughs> to know what you are determining, what you are trying to decide for this vehicle has a cost associated with it. And in my history, lots of people said, well, you cannot harm my theme, whatever the cost mm -hmm. is. That's not true. And that fight ends up happening much, much later. So this is a style and design decision that was made for this vehicle that because of regulation requirements required more cost, more money, more wiring, separate component in order to meet that. Exactly. How often, because you come at it from a different uh, perspective than the OEM designers, how often do the designers actually get all of those requirements in advance or understand the requirements enough so that they know the effects of their design? Understanding it is the most important thing ahead of time. Uh, even before you get attached to a visual theme, I think it's important to study the rules and regulations to make something possible uh, before you even hit pen to paper. I, I think you get certain efficiencies with an experienced designer, frankly. Um, and I don't know, in this case, I think there could have been other solutions. Um, even on uh, the, the first, uh, I think it was like 2014 Mustang, there was a little indentation. Basically, if, if this spot or, or the top of the grill there had just a little indentation, uh, you could consider that uh, an air bleed uh, channel, sort of. Uh, that's what it was, but it was on the lower fascia, not, not next to the headlamp. But that could have been utilized to, you know, project the light uh, without an additional electronic feature or part. It, it could have just been a little bit of resurfacing to make that work. Uh, so when we see a finished vehicle, we see what has made it out of the design studio and has survived through the normal manufacturing process, the normal development process. Once we go back to stuff from that, we have the design that the studio has released that the engineers are trying to design to, but may not be practical. That is normally where I'm at, where I have to fight with the studio and say, look, you came up with something that it's not practical because of X, Y, or Z. The studio's desire is to challenge me on my assumption that it is not appropriate because of X, Y, or Z, which is their right. What I never get to see, which you do, I want to see the scratch designs and images that were done before they had released their initial design to engineering. That's a great point. Understanding because, the original intent. Yes, because I've noticed that once something is on paper, they never want to change it. Or sometimes once something is on paper, the engineers are unwilling to challenge. 
and say, okay, this is what we have. So by the effects of that, I have this additional light. Did anyone ever go back to studio and question that to try and have that type of simplification? I bet you the answer is probably no. Um, they may not have known until later on when they were asked to stylize the light that they were required to have. Right. Um, that entire nebulous process of being able to have the initial, the initial scratch drawing to having a design that you want to release to engineering, the fight between engineering and studio to bring something that is actually manufacturable, and then the back end, the resultant cost of all of those decisions. Yeah, you're paying for uh, what could be a misunderstanding, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, there are efficiencies. That's, that's why I do like being in a consultancy, being able to really reach all levels of uh, the client's industry, company. Um, yeah, uh, really thinking about a problem from, uh, from a very distant uh, standpoint, honestly. You can, you can kind of see the whole problem. Whereas sometimes if you get siloed, you end up with details like that. So what I wanted to bring up with this was uh, how sophisticated the suspension is on this vehicle. Um, and I, I feel like it's, uh, although the skin is extremely similar to the, the gas version, uh, the underpinnings are uh, really advanced uh, from, from what I can see. Um, you know, you have these modulated uh, uh, suspension at every corner, uh, far beyond uh, the coil spring, which was, which was a big thing for RAM for a, a long time. Um, I, I suspect this is going to be a really good handling uh, uh, vehicle. Um, the number of links on the rear suspension, uh, again, contributing to what I would say is a, a very stable uh, uh, and, and just should really elevate the, uh, the handling uh, and the ride experience. Um, I also wanted to point out just the, uh, the little rise in the battery pack, uh, that doghouse in the front. Um, obviously this hasn't been pursuing like the same Tesla flat floor. You know, this is going to be a vehicle with a center console. Um, it's kind of a familiar feature with, uh, with these full size pickups. Uh, so you do have that opportunity for a little extra space in your battery pack. Um, no, that's actually kind of unique because I recently tore down a few trucks and there was one version that did have basically a flat floor underneath the center console. Mm -hmm. Then we had to add in all of this structure for supporting the center console. Whereas another truck that I tore down still had the raise in the floor, but I was trying to actually calculate the amount of reduction in interior structure and components if the vehicle had a center console that they were actually achieving. Because on the one hand, we get excited saying, I can get rid of that and have a nice flat floor to work off of. But if you have a nice flat floor to work off, you have to build everything up. Mm -hmm. So they're getting a benefit from whatever is underneath that cover, but there's also possibly an interior benefit since this vehicle would have a center console. That is some of their structure. That is some of their riser. So there is overall vehicle savings depending on their initial, depending on their interior styling. Uh, the other feature that I thought was interesting, and I'm not sure if it's uh, having to do with keeping the load capacity relatively high in the back that you don't want to overload that, but it was just how far forward in in the vehicle they, they ended the battery, battery. pack. Yeah. It actually looks like, and maybe in the future they'll expand it. Um, I'm not entirely sure how structural that is. I, I assume that is effectively replacing your ladder frame. Uh, you can see these sizable bolts going through uh, the frame rails on this side. Um, but you do have that cross member behind the battery. Uh, it, it does seem like you could extend your range by expanding that, but I don't know all the implications there. Yeah, we don't know what other features, what other electronics may actually be using that space. Yep. Maybe it is completely empty. So when I spoke with the exterior styling on the RAM with Mark, I had pointed out the fact that yes, we still have our piano black on the front grille and the over RPM, but if you look down the side, there is a reduction in the number of actual decorative trim components 
and all of the styling is done by the actual shape of the panels and the shape of the door and window openings. Yeah, it, it is very clean and actually the, the reflection on that really shows that right now, just how kind of seamless uh, how that looks. I mean, normally what we would see for even um, wheel well cladding, the formation is just in the metal. It's not in an actual separate plastic panel. So months ago when we reviewed the, uh, what was it, the X, I, IX? IX. IX. Um, that was uh, related to this, I want to say, but this is the XM. So this is the, the M Performance SUV. Um, I really feel like this is such a huge departure from BMW of yore. Um, obviously, I had my own problems with uh, with the iX's front fascia. I do think this is a, a little bit more. Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, the way the fascia in the center body color part hangs down below uh, the blackout panels uh, really bugged me on that. This gets rid of that, but it brings in a bunch of other faux blackout panels, like this side trim. It's almost like early 2010 Pontiac levels of cladding. <laughs> How dare I, I know. But this, this trim on the side. The other thing that kind of reminds me of is the first uh, Volt concept. How it had that, uh, yep. it was actually supposed to be a, an extension of the window. Um, but yeah, you end up with this kind of spiral um, underlining itself. But it's uh, just of questionable purpose frankly. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I mean, it's uh, it, it's not a functional bumper, of course, at least on the Pontiacs. It was in an area that would receive, you know, shopping carts hitting it and stuff. Nothing's going to hit you up here. So whenever I was working with the designers and I was trying to develop the actual part, on the designer screen, in their artwork, this band would be continuous. Of course. In reality, that band is not continuous. It is not. It no. is stopping before the edge of the door because you did not want that trim piece to be the protruding component because then you have the possibility of it getting nicked or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So now we have to have the body color visible between those two pieces of the trim. That happens multiple places across this vehicle. So the designer who wanted this nice line now has broken up line segments, which is not reflected in their drawings. Yeah. Now, the other th issue, which can become an issue, this is passing over on an angle. So we have an actual angle being cut through, which means this piece and this piece are not at the same height. One is actually lower than the other. And that type of an this. offset can cause problems in the way you view the part depending on the angle. So some people that I've had issues with, when I've made components that went together like that, I would make the individual components. And for me, it was normally on the interior trim between the door panel, the B pillar, and the rear door panel. And they would have some sort of an angle feature that don't line up. Mm -hmm. And I would complain and I said, look, you've made this at an angle. Geometrically, because of the way that angle translates across the doors, they're not going to look like they line up because of the angle. Also, who puts this door on? The OEM does. I don't, I made the individual components. So yes, there could be some tolerance issues with my components, but there's a huge tolerance issue with the installation of those components to the actual vehicle. So whose finger gets to be point where of whose problem it is? So I, I have some, the actual look of this halo going around the window, the way that it's slightly offset from the window, maybe I don't have a problem with that. I think that it sticks out way too much on white uh, but looking at all of these sections, I that's see what, all of those. That's as what kills you. Yeah, and I think the only other way that to have done this is, first of all, if you weren't using metal, if this was a composite door or something, you could have nicked this, tucked it in a little bit, and had the trim piece wrap into an indentation. But uh, this being metal, you have a hem flange, and your geometry can only be so complex with a hem flange. So, yeah, you're, you're stuck with, effectively, this stick-on decal. 
In one of the earlier videos, I had mentioned how there were issues where I had been in design studio with representation from many different commodities, and we will literally spend hours arguing over one millimeter. This is one of those one or two millimeter situations that we would argue at. Um, we need to know between the trim manufacturer what their capabilities are, between the door manufacturer what their capabilities are, what the overall look that Studio wants, how manufacturing is going to be installing this to vehicle, what is their tolerance? Because if this went right to the edge, but it happens to be one millimeter too long, well, it has to go from edge to edge. I'm having tolerance on one side or the other. So we would literally fight over those little tiny slivers. That is where all of the labor and all of the man hours winds up being in developing this part. It is not this surface. That is easy. That is hard. Yeah. And, and when you were talking about high-end buyers, um, I, I agree, they, they don't hang on to their cars for very long, typically, unless it's extremely exotic, even then. Uh, with this, something they're probably not concerned about, but maybe it'll be a, a concern 10, 15 years in the future, is the rate of expansion difference between the, the plastic trim and, and the metal, especially with how small this is relatively. It's not like it has a, a bunch of perimeter adhesion to kind of shift around. It's, it's pretty isolated and, you know, sitting in the sun, it's expanding, flat. contracting, expanding, contracting. If I have a fixed attachment position here and a fixed attachment position here, oh, man. that is very, very hard to the door. Okay. And now you have heat and expansion contraction. Yeah, now I'm having bow. rippling, I'm having bowing. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, not for that. <laughs> I know, that's, you can spend an hour talking about yeah. a line. Yeah. So Josiah, thank you very much for walking around the auto show with me. Uh, seeing different things from your point of view, I know I have my point of view, but I like having the discussion, going back and forth and understanding where you're coming from, where I'm coming from, the things that you enjoy seeing. And of course, I, of course, I like seeing anything I want to see. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great to meet up. And I yeah, love having these conversations. They're very enlightening and entertaining. So, yeah. So stay tuned to Monroe Live for more videos from the North American International Auto Show.